What's up guys, Gary with self -taught Dev. Today we are gonna go over how to get this cool little background effect where it's not the full height of the element and it's kind of hanging off the edge a little bit on the left and the right and the bottom. I've had a few people in Discord ask me how to get this effect, so decided to make a video on it. If you've got any CSS stuff where you're like, how do you do that, how does that work, I don't get it, let me know and I will make a video showing you how it works. So let's go. We are using our little CSS tutorial site here, so nothing fancy, probably not even gonna look good when we do this, but we're gonna inspect this. Now we've got a div with an H1 inside, that's what we're gonna apply the background to, and we're gonna do it with a pseudo element. Pseudo element is an element that's on, it's not really on the page, it's not really an element, but it's there. Um, it needs to have content, so as you can see right here, there is the before pseudo element. If we remove content, it goes away. It's not there anymore. So you have to have the content attribute in your pseudo element for it to show up. And you can also add text with this too. You can add whatever you want. It can be an image, it can be nothing like we have right now, or you can just say like context. And then you've got some text on the screen. But like I said, it's a pseudo element, so you can't really interact with it. You can't click it to highlight the text like you could with this. But you can use it to add some cool design stuff like this background we're about to do. Now, we don't want context there, so we're gonna remove that. And just for aesthetically pleasing purposes, we're gonna say display flex, justify content, center to get the H1 in the center of the screen here. Now we do need to apply some stuff to the H1, we'll do that later. But first thing we're gonna do is add a background of What's a good color to add here? We'll just do blue, where it's probably not gonna look great, but whatever. Um, and then we want the width to be 105%. Now, we're using 105 instead of 100 because if we use 100, it's just gonna take up the width of the H1. We're using 105, so it's gonna give us a little bit more on the edges, and we can get that overlay effect with that. Then we want the height to be, we'll say 70%. We don't want to use 100% because we want the background to be offset a little bit. We don't want it to take up the full height of the H1. We want it to take up like 70% of the H1. Then we also want the position of this to be absolute. Now you're saying, Garrett, what the heck is that? There's a giant blue square on my screen. Well, that's where the stuff we apply to the H1 comes in. We just need to add position relative. So the H1 basically contains the blueness. And then we also want to add display inline block. And that'll give us a little bit more flexibility with it. Now, as you can see right here, if we just look at the H1, we've already got some hanging off the edge. That's that extra 5% that we added to the width. So we want it equal on both sides. So we'll just do left minus 2.5%. So now we've got 2.5% hanging off both edge. And then to get it on the bottom, we'll just say bottom, let's see what does zero look like. So zero is already kind of hanging off it looks like. We do want the text in front of our background. So we'll say Z index negative one, and that'll get our text in front. And then just to make this contrast a little higher, we'll say background gray. And then if the H1, we'll say color white. So now it shows up a little bit more. I want the font family to be robot. There we go. It looks a little better than the default font family there. So that's pretty much how you do it. We'll actually probably make this 60% um, just to make it look like it's hanging off a little bit more. And then you can also do whatever you want to it. Like we can say border radius. Uh, we'll say 0, 0, 5 pixels, 5 pixels. And now we've got sharpness on top and then nice curves on the side bottom part. And you can do this to whatever element you want. Like you can apply it to all of your nav items. You can apply it to paragraph text if you wanna have like a box hanging off the side of the text. So the text, I can't explain it, but you know what I mean. That's basically how you do it. So if this helps you out, give me a thumbs up so YouTube knows I'm doing good stuff. I know I'm doing good stuff that's helping you out. Um, if you've got any CSS questions or need any help, let me know in the comments below. Happy to help you out. 
I do resume reviews as well for aspiring front-end developers. So if you wanna send me your resume, my email's in the description. Uh, it will probably be in a resume review video if I do give you feedback, so just be aware of that. And lastly, make sure you check out selfthought-dev.com. I have been making projects over the past year. One of the biggest things I struggled with when I was trying to become a developer was what do I build to practice these new skills I have? Like I felt too intimidated to build a Facebook clone or like Airbnb, something like that. So I've made some like nice, simple projects that you can kind of step through to get HTML, CSS and JavaScript out. So check that out, links in the description. And also if you didn't come hop in Discord, talk to me, talk tech, talk to some other devs, a link for that is in the description as well. I think that's about it for this one. Make sure you hit that subscribe button so you can stay up to date when I put out new content and I will see you next time, peace.